Hello, everybody. E3 or bus. E3 or bus. Sign has wound up being <laughs> every single video we've made this E3. Welcome to our day two roundup for 2015's E3. Uh, we're going to be just chatting about what people saw on the floor, what's been going on, etc., etc. But first, we're going to let them introduce you to them and what they do, etc., etc. I'm getting all tongue-tied. Let's start with you, Dave. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? I'm Dave Klein of Dave Control on YouTube. I do a lot of Bloodborne and Dark Souls to start putting up some Dark Souls 3 stuff. And I do comedy gaming retrospectives, gaming history, and that's about it. Excellent. I, I, um, I run a channel called Versus uh, with me. Uh, it's me and my, my friend Tyler. Uh, we do kind of a collab channel where we do single player games and make them multiplayer by racing through them. Um, and I also have my own personal channel where I do Let's Plays and uh, gaming discussions like this. <laughs> yeah, just like this. That was my segue. <laughs> Madam. Hi, I'm Mal from Steven Plays and I'm joined by my husband Steven. I'm Steven. I'm the husband from Steven. <laughs> <laughs> we play video games on the internet for your enjoyment or your disdain. You choose. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> all right, so when you guys came in, you were all talking about how you had played just gobs and gobs and gobs of games, but I couldn't tell if it was sarcastic or not. Did you actually play gobs and gobs of games? Josh? I played... A few gobs and gobs of games. <laughs> uh, I played, yeah, and well, I played, um, I played a handful of stuff from like everything except for Microsoft. Um, I played a bunch of stuff from Nintendo and a bunch of stuff from Sony, mostly Sony, because I feel like Sony won this year. <laughs> um, but I played Star Fox. That was the first thing I played, mm -hmm. and I'm not a huge Star Fox guy, but. It, it, it was alright. Did, did, were you right. able to, during the demo, change into the different modes of ships and types? Or did you just play in an R-Wing? You could play in an R-Wing, but the R-Wing transformed into a little chicken that ran across oh, the so ground. Oh, so it did transform that. <laughs> so yep. do that. Right, you cool. just pushed a button, you, you dropped to the ground, and it flutters. So was it more kind of, because I just saw people over the shoulder and I decided, eh, this, long, this line's too long, so I moved on to something else. But like, when you were playing it, it's, but was it less on rails, kind of more exploratory, or how did it work? It was just like Star Fox 64, actually. Uh, it starts off and it's like, it, you're on a pathway and you shoot things, and then you get to a place that's not a pathway, and you <laughs> continue to shoot things. <laughs> it actually is Star Fox 64. I was going to say, it's Star Fox 64. Like Star it's Star Fox 64. 64. 64. <laughs> All right. Um, I also played, I played a bunch of indie stuff at the Sony booth. Um, I played... What is it called? Salt and Sanctuary. Salt and Sanctuary. That's why I played it. Yeah. That was a Mal also fun. played it. That was really, really Which good. Which one is you that? Definitely need to talk it's about like the mechanics. It's like a 2D Dark Souls. Yeah. It's like oh. a side scroller. Yeah. They they go really in depth with the mechanics of it, even though it's a um it's a side scrolling game. So like you can have two different weapons loaded out for your character that you can switch between. You can parry and repost enemies that you using one of the buttons. It has a giant skill tree. So if you're into like decking out different types of stats and skills and going down a certain arc for your character. It's ridiculously huge, like over a hundred different like icons and like just a giant skill tree. But it's Dark Souls style, very unforgiving, challenging, difficult, but mechanically really a lot of depth to it for a when I, game. When I got the hang of it, because it is hard, because yeah. you know, it's 2D Dark Souls. The first time I died, I was like, okay, you know what, I'm gonna try again, I'm gonna play through. And then I got killed by the gravity. <laughs> <laughs> so just like Dark Souls. I just Ooh. jumped into a pit at, you know, yeah, just like Dark Souls. That's, that's <laughs> gravity DOP, please nerf. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. like one of the, of the games I played today, because that was one that I did today. That was one of my two favorite games I played today. Just, um, it's definitely worth checking out whenever it's up, or oh, yeah. if you can do it when, I, I think it's going to be on Steam, I'm assuming, on top of Sony, but mm -hmm. it, was on, it was demoing on PS4, it was in the Sony section. I feel like there was a lot of stuff demoing in the Sony booth that yes. wasn't available and elsewhere. It, and it's cool too, the developer, the guy who made the game was the one who was uh, right there yep. like, talking to you about the game, but yeah, it's just, um, it's really methodical too with the way that the swinging works, um, like you're weighted and the way that it feels, and I really dug it. So, uh, how about that Ratchet and Clank though? Oh, yeah. Anybody, anybody like Ratchet and Clank? I checked it out. <laughs> no. Yeah. Damn. I mean, I think they're fun. It's not like something I. I like. Play. I like Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. I'm glad I got to play it because I'm. I've. It's been. I've been a big fan for a long time, and now they're making a game to go along with their movie, that is from a game. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stations Based. for it. There's like eight stations, and there was no one in line. I know. I feel. Man. I feel sad for Ratchet. That Everyone's surprises like, oh, me. I want to play this game. Yeah, I think it's because <laughs> they didn't make a big deal out of it. Because when I, I was really able to hop on pretty easily, and I, I just proceeded to try to break the demo, which was 
probably not the coolest <laughs> thing to do, but it's because I realized you could jump off the edge and I just accidentally did and landed on a little branch way that like ledge that you weren't really supposed to. And I was like, how much further can I break this? <laughs> and just the whole time proceeded to just see how many different areas I could jump off onto and outside of the specific arena you're supposed to be on. I think, I think Insomniac knows that their, their target audience is just Ratchet and Clank fans. So they don't make a big deal of it. They don't spend a lot of money on advertising because they don't need to. Because it's like the they people who the, played the people Ratchet and Clank, play Ratchet and Clank yeah, are going to buy it. They're going to yeah. buy it. And yeah. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. So what else? What other indie games are in the Sony area? Uh, there's that. There's uh, the new Amplitude. The new Amplitude is there. And I was excited about cool, that. Cool, cool. Uh, Terraway, which is actually it's a PS Vita game. I was going to say. They're bringing it. To, been out. They're bringing it to PS4. Uh, so I played that because I hadn't actually played it because I don't have a Vita. Oh, it's so fun. Did you guys by chance see Thumper? I, w I was looking for Thumper? that and I couldn't I find it. I didn't see it. What is okay. that? It's like a music rhythm game, but it looks really cool stylistically. So I was looking for it, but I didn't see it. So I was just seeing if maybe you guys saw it. The new Guitar Hero is also there, but I haven't played oh, it. I haven't played it yet. Stage. I'm going to play it tomorrow. Can we talk about <laughs> Cuphead? Oh, Cuphead. Dave, I think, played some Cuphead. I didn't play Cuphead, but I walked past it several times and just stood and watched. I was like, I love this game. That was so much fun to try it. <laughs> what didn't, is, were the lines a bit too crazy? Or what, what didn't I, it, push you that extra it's, mile? It's not just... that they were crazy. It's that it, it must have been so engaging that people didn't leave. There was no one like There's monitoring no this. There's no space the Microsoft gadget. Gotcha. Like you yeah. can't get around Only like easy. two people can wait in line, but it doesn't yeah. matter because those two people are going to play that game forever. Right. <laughs> play a couple of, man, Cuphead. And I'm like, I'll play or not. That's fine <gasps> or too. Or not. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah, my, my tactic in those situations is just to stand like right here. Yeah. Just watch them play and be like, this looks fun. Just put your face yeah. on their controller and start breathing fun, on it. Right? Whisper lovingly into their ear. <laughs> Might work. Please, just like look at your watch and be like, hmm. Mm. <laughs> wow, I really wish I was playing this fun game right now. Yeah, yeah. That wow, would be so fun. Really what, fun. What I bet it? it's even more oh, fun when you are playing it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a jerk o'clock. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was going to wait until I, I guess it was my turn. But I, since we're talking about Cuphead, yeah. mm -hmm. first I'll pull up. This, this just to be like, yeah, it was like so cool. I was like, I want to grab a card because they were just free on the table, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks pretty cool. But yeah, like Cuphead, um, it's it's kind of it's sort of a mix between a bullet hell game and the platformer. And the best way I could describe it is like Contra, except you have three hearts instead of one. But yeah, it's very Contra esque in a lot of senses. Like it's you're shooting the whole time. It's it's super super difficult, just like Contra as well. And it, what what struck me about it is I thought it would be a whole platform experience where you you're playing on full levels until you reach a boss. But how it is is you have this world map area that you're walking around on, and then you have little areas you can go to from that world map, and then it's just a boss battle. So it's just a bunch of bosses. So in a sense, kind of like Titan Souls in a way, where it's just yeah. a lot of bosses, but. That might detract some people because I don't know what that means the game length is going to be. Mm -hmm. But everything about it, the animations were all very quirky. There was um, a f dual frog boss fight where they're both wearing boxing gloves and then they start spinning and because they're going so fast it creates a fan effect and starts pushing your characters oh, and things yeah. that are clever like that. Um, I fought an old school looking 60s pirate character which was a lot of fun and I was on the clouds fighting dragons. but. To me, I love it. Okay, so when we, we were talking about when we first saw Cuphead um, on the show, we were like, it has to feel good when you're controlling it. Totally. And it's very, very tight. It good. feels great. It's just, um, to me, because I like dodging, I like that challenging platformers like Mega Man that are tight but challenging, yeah. I thought it felt great, and I love the difficulty of it. It's just a challenging game that you're really going to want to, uh, I, I don't know, just keep on replaying until you yeah. beat it. And I was one of those guys who I wanted to stick around, but I didn't want to be the jerk at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So after two deaths, I was like, okay, we, we got to go, even though I really want to keep on playing. I mean, playing. we've probably all been that guy at some point, where you're yeah. just playing a game and you're like, no one's stopping me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. In the Walmart, actually. This. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. when you're seven true. years old and you're like, I know you're behind me, but mm, no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for me, like of the, of the games I played today, specifically, my two favorite games I checked out were Cuphead and Salt and Sanctuary. So those were... Those were just great. They were fantastic games. I, I think those are definitely winners. Yeah, for yeah. for the indie stuff for sure. Um, I, I didn't get to play a lot of a lot of stuff. Is the problem? I didn't play a lot of things. Well, to be fair, there was a lot. Of there was a lot of stuff. I kept on looking for Death's stuff. Gambit, and they showed that during the I think it was on Microsoft in their press conference when they they were um, doing their sizzle reel. I know that Death's Gambit in the past has been at an Adult Swim booth. So oh, okay. Like I'll check the out Adult Swim booth. Thing. That's right, because they purchased. The, yeah. yeah. So I'll check the, that like Westerado and games like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll look for that then. Because I was like in the Microsoft section, like I thought it would be here, and I was on Sony. I thought it might be there. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm wondering how. Uh, because I've I've played Death's Gambit, so I'm wondering yeah. how it differs 
uh, with Sultan Singh. Yeah, because they're both very inspired from the Souls franchises. Mm -hmm. So are the art styles similar at all, or they're both kind of pixel arty in a way? I think. Um, I mean, yeah, they're similar. I think. I think, I think anyone that had seen gameplay footage of Dark Souls and then saw Salt and Sanctuary would make that. Connection I think from what I saw from the trailer of Death Gambit, and I've played Salt and Sanctuary. I think Death Gambit, and maybe you can correct me. It looks more platformer esque. In some ways, uh, in Salt and Sanctuary, where Salt and Sanctuary is very heavy. I wouldn't say that it feels like a platformer, really. More like the thing that I took away from Death's Gambit was that uh, it's it encourages you to learn patterns, sort of in the same way that Dark Souls right. does. But like with Dark Souls, it's more you try to understand the the sequence of attacks from a boss, and they could mm -hmm. happen in random orders, mm -hmm. and like when to dodge and things like that. But in Death's Gambit, a lot of times it was like, this is how this is going to happen every single time. So you just like, you learn the exact pattern and how to counter it. Yeah, yeah. So that's more what I took away from okay, Death's Gambit. Okay, because, yeah, in the trailer I thought I remember like some crazy like moving platform stuff you could latch on to. In, in the trailer Maybe specifically. Yeah, I just never got to that. Yeah, I don't know. But I mean, so yeah, that definitely sounds similar though, what you're describing to Salt and Sanctuary, so <laughs> it's like... I have to play Salt and right. Sanctuary yeah. then, and you then will. I can actually yeah, we'll, compare them. We'll trade off. So tomorrow you can play Salt and Sanctuary, I'll play my desk game. Perfect, and then, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, did any of you take the time to stand in like a long line today? We, uh, the three of us waited in a line to see the, the PlayStation 3-in-1 experience that was... Whoa. It was, uh, it was, they were, they it was were, like, like an hour and a half wait. Yeah, even less actually. Yeah, less it a little bit. For, it wasn't uh, that bad actually. Surprising. For Horizon Zero Dawn. Yep. Last Guardian and, and Uncharted. Oh, Horizon Lord. looks so good. Yeah, Horizon looks fantastic. It's such an interesting concept. I like I like the cool. world. I don't know if I would like the actual game. Like I don't know if I would like the game. I don't yeah. know what the game is. It seems is. relatively yeah. generic from what they've shown, but it's like starts as hunting, but for like, Horizon, who knows what happens. Yeah, I thought yeah. the gameplay looked really fun from it, the trailer because you're kind of like rolling underneath enemies, it, taking out certain parts of them. It has that sort of monster hunter? -y yeah. yeah. When I actually, add the demo. The demo was a little bit longer. Yeah. It was a live demo. Right. It was a little bit longer than what they showed at the press conference. And they showed a little bit more of this, like like fighting this gigantic dinosaur right. robot. Thing. And they also explained like blowing off parts of it, like the menus and stuff, because they were like, "Oh, hey, we don't just have puncture arrows; we have right. explosive arrows." Right. Yeah. Electric with arrows. The, yeah, and these do this. So. so there was more to it than what they just showed. Is in, in it was the actual dev team that came down from yeah Canada yeah and actually were showing it themselves. Right. Amsterdam. 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 Okay, so out of curiosity, then, because I saw <laughs> <laughs> I saw that line, and so you're saying that line was for all three. All three. Yes. You go oh. in, and then you go in, you sit in the theater, you watch a demo, and then you go to the next thing. Because I wanted to see Last shirt. Guardian. And then you get a shirt at the end. shirt. Cool. All right, because I wanted to see Last Guardian, and it was in the middle, and there's no line for it, so I was like, oh, I guess it's just closed. Yeah, you got to so watch all three. Okay. I mean, that, that's cool. They, I mean, Horizon and Last Guardian, both of those I really want to see. I think that the Last Guardian right. demo was the least impressive of the three, though. Really? Yeah. Be it, it, the other two were live demos. Right. The Last Guardian oh. was not. Last it was like two minutes of extra footage before what they showed at the okay. press conference. Last mm -hmm. Guardian still looks like it's a still PS3 looks. game. Yeah. I mean, I'll say yeah, it. Yeah. I, I agree with that. When I was watching the trailer, like, I was obviously overwhelmed by feelings of, like, I want <laughs> this game wow. yeah. so yeah, like, bad. But like, yeah, like reflecting back on the way that things like the feathers looked, I was like, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a current gen game. Yeah, right? it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look, if maybe at all different than what we saw in two thousand nine. Yeah, it's like okay, you know, I'm I, excited for it. Right, I love Team Eco games. <laughs> oh yeah, said, doesn't look like a PS four game. No. Right. So. Yeah, I noticed that too from the trailer. Like, I mean. Regardless, to me, it's like, well, Shadow of the Colossus is so great, and they're so great at making games, that whole team, that it can look however it's going to look. It can look like <laughs> a couple pieces of poop, and you're like, yeah, actually, your you're feather guy is a poop that you're riding, riding around. <laughs> you, act, totally you actually play it. as feces. I would just be like, you know what, I, I'd still get it if it was by this team. I, I would, I'll still buy it. <laughs> I'd like, get it. So, I mean, I was just excited. It, PS3 graphics are still great in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's fine. So, yeah, but... It's too bad they didn't show more about the gameplay. It was yeah. just basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah that, that was what I was disappointed most about is that like they kind of just showed a little bit more of what we already saw like three years ago. You know, like we saw a little yeah. bit of gameplay stuff like three years ago of him interacting with your bird friend and And climbing. And climbing. God knows there has to be climbing. Well yeah, yeah. <laughs> so always. It, always. It was it was underwhelming. Yeah. There were more than a, a number of underwhelming things at this year's E three for me. Like the entirety of Nintendo's E3 broadcast. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. We didn't really talk about the shots. Nintendo E3 broadcast yesterday. Sorry, Nintendo. Would you guys like to get some things off of your chest? Because we haven't really talked about it at all. So. I didn't watch it. Maybe because there's a reason we didn't talk about it at all. <laughs> I didn't watch it, and then I talked to him, and he's like, you don't. 
I, <laughs> just I, don't do it. Don't do it. I'll keep. I'll, lots of amiibos, right? I'll keep the fisticuffs away. <laughs> it's fine. I, I kept. I got a text from friends because I was at the convention floor, and they were just like. Dude, Nintendo's so sad. Nintendo's so sad. And I was like, so okay, well, Nintendo. And I was like, oh no. Nintendo announced a new Metroid game, yeah. um, and the new Metroid game is Metroid Prime, and it's like a first-person 3DS game that doesn't involve Samus, or at least at this stage, it doesn't. Um, it's a spin-off. You can't have a Metroid game with no Samus. It's it is a <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it is a Metroid oh, spin-off. It. No. It's because it's a bunch of Metroids attacking whoever. <laughs> right. And it's it's not a Samus game. It's a Metroid game. It's a weird okay, and different. Fine. <laughs> it's weird and different, and I think it rubbed people the wrong way. While I have no doubt in my mind that it will be probably fun, it's Nintendo. It'll be fun. You know, they're gonna do a good job. Um, it's not what people were expecting. Well, I think the other thing too is at this point, everyone's hoping for a Wii U Metroid Prime game. Yeah. Especially like, I feel like with the Wii U controller, you could, if you were clever and like maybe you took some inspiration from how Zombie U did games, you could probably think of something really cool for Metroid Prime specifically to use the functionality of the Zombie touchpad. U had some good features right. that they could definitely utilize and, in And it feels like Metroid games. Prime is the yeah. perfect game to utilize that. So that's that's Agreed. really what the shame was with that. I always forget that Zombie U existed. And so <laughs> yeah. people are trying to be like, no, that's a way to use the controller, right? Like, that's literally the only time people bring up zombie people. Well, yeah, because other than that, it's just sort of a generic uh, zombie survival game. And how many more of these do we want? But More, more zombies. More zombies. I, I do want to interject. I know that Nintendo's E3 thing was apparently not like, the best or whatever. And I'm not, a, I'm not the biggest fan of Nintendo in the world. However, they do provide Nintendo Directs all throughout the year. Yeah, that's true. That is true. You've got to take true. that into consideration. Nintendo dropping those all the time. Nintendo is not focusing on E3 anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's clear. Oh, it's very clear. But I clear. mean, like, let's be honest. I think for a lot of people, Nintendo's presence at E3 had nothing to do with their Nintendo Direct. It was no. all about the World Champions. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's definitely a great point, because, like, how excited yeah. were we after the Nintendo World Championship? The hype was so that's, legit. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was so fun to watch. And that's, like, all I can think about still is, like, I still really want Mario Maker, because that World Championship makes me really want it. So, in a sense, they just sold the game, at least to me. Yeah. Has anybody uh, played Mario Maker yet? I wanted to. I played it last year. Oh, interesting. Have not played it this year, but um, since playing it last year, they've added a lot of things. La playing it last year, I was really like, I was like, this is nothing. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go home and play with Lunar Magic. <laughs> um, you know, like I'm not gonna. Yeah, I wasn't gonna get it. Um, but everything they've shown in the Nintendo Directs up to this point, they've added all kinds of things. And then they showed off in the direct. They showed off. They're like, you can place enemies where enemies normally wouldn't be, like Goombas underwater. And there's like a Goomba struggling to get <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> you can drown a species. You can drown That'll a Goomba. Be great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nintendo. That's so sad. <laughs> oh my goodness. I did play Woolly World. Mm. Yeah. Somehow it's that? it's just like the other Yoshi games, but somehow it's even cuter. It's impossible. What are Add you talking yarn. about? Add yarn. The textures yarn are gorgeous. Cuter. I mean, yeah. I had a lot of fun with it. They're like Kirby did, and it was really cute. So mm -hmm. yeah. let's do it. Yoshi's Yoshi. Epic Yarn. <laughs> Yoshi's Epic Yarn, which yeah. is what I continue to call it. There are what two different yarn games? Because there's also Unraveled. Yeah. So there are two oh, different yeah. yarn games at E3 oh. this year. If you I'm could like, have another Kirby's Epic Yarn, they started it. If you could have a third yarn-based Nintendo <laughs> game, <laughs> I'm going with Donkey Kong <laughs> Yarn Tree. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, this is a great question. Yeah, All right. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Mm. Does it have to be Nintendo? Well, I guess not. What would you pick? Yarn Souls. Yarn I was gonna say. Souls. I was gonna say Yarn of War. <laughs> <laughs> Hash, like, hashtag replace the the word of a <laughs> game with yarn. There you go. There you go. Have that internet. Get that going. On I just Twitter. like imagining playing like a really dark, gritty game, but yeah. when you kill somebody, they just turn into pieces of yarn. It's <laughs> all over. Yeah. Unravel, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking like Kratos as yarn, and it's like they're trying to make it super cute, and, like cuddly. <laughs> oh, cuddly. Cuddly Kratos. You can knit yeah. Cuddly Kratos. <laughs> oh, wonderful. It would be the perfect grandma game. Or like <laughs> Grand Theft Yarn. Grand Theft Yarn. <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Please. You only steal from yarn stores. <laughs> yes. You can hit that one up right now. Actually, yeah. I would totally buy Grand Theft Yarn. Actually, sounds really I would amazing. buy all of these yarn yeah. games. What we're just saying, to know what they were like. I'm very impressed we've continued to talk about this. Yeah, I think what we're saying is that there was a, a surprising lack of yarn games at E3, considering how well they would definitely sell. <laughs> yeah. Guys, more yarn games. You know what we want. You laugh. <laughs> Nintendo will do it. They, they, they will. will no, it. they will. That, they that will. is that is a new that is a new genre that they are creating. Yarn games. Yarn, Yarn fox. <laughs> yes. Yarn fox. Yarn fox. 
They actually, you know what the fox uh, th- that they had at the booth for Star Fox Assault? <laughs> he, look, he looked like a stuffed animal. It's like, he looks so cute. That Star Fox stuffed it's animal. so precious. I would get him. Yeah, the, oh, there's, the Star Fox advertisements were really cool because they were like actual figures and like fluffy little figures in a little display. It's kind of like a diorama. I like it. Well, it kind of almost harkens back to when Star Fox first came out. The one on Super Nintendo is mm. the clay that they used for the figures. Oh, yeah. So in a way, it's, like, it's almost reminiscent, reminiscent of that to me. Yeah. Mm. I'm a fan. So as, uh, as we're, we're winding down, um, is there anything else that you guys just like have a mighty need that you would love to express your feelings about? Uncharted? Fallout, Fallout 4. Fallout 4. Yeah. Four. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncharted 4. <laughs> four. Uncharted. Farted 4, yeah. Uh, Fallout. Fallout, Fallout and Uncharted 4, my god. Mm. I wish they were playable. And neither yeah. of them are playable. Yeah. 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 That's because yeah. they know they, they don't need to advertise them. Yeah. Just sell. <laughs> I mean, I checked out Street Fighter V, which for me was pretty cool to check oh, out. But awesome. it, was, it was a little bit slower, and I'd heard that, which was kind of sad to me, but I liked the new mechanic they added where... Um, you have this new meter that can fill up, and you have, every character has a new um, kind of like a counter or a special attack that, or a special ability that relates to them. So I like that it'll add a little bit more depth. Like Ryu has a, a count, uh, parry, and Bison I played as, and his was a counter as opposed to a parry, so it immediately hit the enemy. And then I checked out Below, which um, I, don't know, I love the team because Swords and Sorcery was such an amazing game. Yeah. They're the guys who made uh, Super Brothers Swords and Sorcery. But um, I thought it was fantastic. It's one of those games where, like at E3, it I just was like, you know, this is a game I'm sure I'll want to play, but playing it here, there's just I'm not getting much out of it because it's a, you're not a, getting the like emotional mm-hmm. right, right. Because it's definitely yeah. something where you just have to sit down alone and play it. I think as opposed to at a convention where there's crazy yeah. things and music blasting and all that. <laughs> yeah, a ton of people behind you in line. Yeah. yeah, there are definitely games like that. Every time I go to a convention, where I'm like, I'm sure this game is great, yeah. but I can't like. I can't let it grab me, right? you know, because... And I felt so bad because I've been so excited about Below. That was one of those games I was really excited about. I was like, man, it's just not grabbing me. And I, I hope it's just the fact that it's just not a convention title, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. I also still want The Witness. What the hell? What the hell, The Witness? <laughs> oh, yeah, that kind, of, that kind of went dark, didn't it? Yeah. I didn't even I remember that it even existed. I you mentioned it just Where now. are you? <laughs> the Witness, that's the game that's made Where'd by the... Where'd you go? That's, that's made by the same guy that made Braid, right? Yeah. Yeah. And apparently it was at the the Las Vegas thing that Sony did. Oh, where 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 are you at? Where are you at, Witness? I totally I totally I'll check you out. I'll check you out, Witness. <laughs> if you're at it's chilling somewhere with Fez too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I went too far. Oh, oh. Ooh, no. <laughs> uh. Owned. All right, guys. Thank you so much for for joining me and talking about your uh, E3 experience so far. So. Gonna let them go one at a time again and tell you who they are and where you can find them, and also give us like one thing that you're planning on doing tomorrow. So okay, we'll start with you this time, Josh. Okay, uh, I run a channel called Versus, and I'm hanging out with my uh, friend Tyler over there doing single player games, making them competitive, and it's a lot of fun. It's very vulgar, so if that bothers <laughs> you, don't do it. But it's fun. Um, <laughs> that sounds great. I'm sold. Check check it out anyway, uh, and. Tomorrow, I'm for sure going to play Guitar Hero. Because I'm a huge Guitar Hero fan. Perfect. What do you think about the whole live aspect, though? Or the FMV? The <laughs> Sega CD's back. I, I, I actually don't know anything about it. All right. So I'm going to show up there, and I'm going to talk to the developers and be like, show me your game. I don't know anything about this. I Help don't... me out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just rock play out. Play it for me. <laughs> play it for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave? Hey, guys. I'm Dave Klein of Dave Control. I do a lot of... Uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne content, I do comedy gaming retrospectives, gaming history, and tomorrow I've got scheduled appointments for the new Deus Ex, so I'm really excited about that. I've got an appointment for uh, Hellblade, which is a game that, there was a trailer last week that came out through Sony's YouTube, which is about a girl with mental illness who's also a Viking, and they use the mental illnesses to incorporate into the game design of it, so I'm really excited to check that game out and uh, be able to talk about it. So those are the two things I planned specifically. Awesome. And uh, Lord and Lady Stephen plays. <laughs> what do you two uh, plan on doing tomorrow? And where can people find you to show you some love? People can find both Mal and I yes. over on Stephen Plays. Um, as far as what we're doing tomorrow, I can guarantee you one thing. Sleeping in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sleeping in. Good call. Because, uh, it's been three a takes it out of me. Yes, yeah. it does. Man, so much. 
I, I say yeah as though I've been to the floor at all yet. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah it sure yeah, does. Yeah, yeah I've totally out, had time you know? to play games today. You know, it's, it's just the thought of E3 took it out of you. Yeah, it's it was just like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am Dodger. You can find me on YouTube.com slash press hard to continue. Tomorrow I plan on actually going to E3, so... <laughs> Keep your eyes out for that madness. Uh, start up the hashtag, replace a game name with yarn, make that a thing, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow for our final daily wrap-up. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.